Welcome to Zero to Fight Stick, the tutorial series that shows you how to build and repair your fight stick from the ground up. Now in this episode, I'm going to be going over how to maintain your J-Lever. So if you have a Sandwich JLF, a Sandwich JLX, any number of Sumitsu levers, they all operate on very similar principles and they can all be maintained the same way. So I'm going to be demonstrating with the new Sandwich JLX and I'm going to go over four common problems that you might experience. So the four problems I'm going to help you solve include, I have a loose ball top, bat top, or bullet top. How do I you know, change this out or tighten it down so it doesn't come loose? Number two, if you are moving your stick and it feels crunchy, it doesn't feel like it's nice and smooth as it used to be, maybe about a year ago, then I'll show you how to fix that by lubricating your pivot. Number three, I'll show you how if you have a, you know, a switch just isn't working, it's not registering as uniformly as it should and you've tested it out, you know, it's just not responding the way it used to, I'll show you how to replace the switch assembly. And finally, if you feel like, you know, you played on your stick for a while and the return to center isn't as good, it isn't the way it used to be, or you like something stronger, I'll show you how to replace the spring. All right, let's start off with getting into problem one by first reviewing what you're going to need. First of all, you're going to need any tools that are going to get you inside your case. So if you have a pop open case, you, know, you press a button like on the Victrix or something and it just comes open, then you're set. Now, if you need some specialized screwdrivers to get in there, well, you're going to need those. Uh, but also for the actual repair, you're going to need a flathead screwdriver. I'm using a 532nd, but it doesn't have to be that precise. Uh, just something that will fit in the slot we're going to be putting in here shortly. Okay, so let's get into the repair. Now, I have this outside of a case, of course, but it works the same. You'll just have to work with a bigger thing as you're doing this. So I've hand tightened this, and as you can see, just by gripping the shaft, it's really trivial to unscrew it, and that's going to lead to a bad day, right? So what do we do about that? Well, it's really easy. What you want to do is just hold on to that ball top and shaft, and then make sure your flathead fits in this little slot here on the bottom. Now give that a twist while you give the other side a twist. You might feel it just slot in a little bit more, and then you're gonna find it a lot harder to try and remove. So that solves that issue. There's an even better fix, let's show you. Well, I said there's a better long-term fix, but it takes some short-term pain to do uh, because you're going to need to remove your lever more likely than not. Now, that solution is a shaft cover, and this provides a little bit more protection, I feel. Plus, you know, you can get the color you want, customize your stick just that much further. Now, I know some of you don't like shaft covers. You want as thin as possible. Okay, I get it. This part of the video is not for you. But let me show you, you know, the basics of how to install this. What you're going to need to do is remove the lever from your case. So make note of the orientation and such. I am not going to demonstrate it here. I believe I have some other lever installation videos available on the channel. Uh, it's not super hard, but you may need, say, a nut driver, etc. to remove it. Anyhow, that kit you get should have a set of dust washers that are a little bit bigger than the stock. And you're going to need to put down that first dust washer here. That's going to be mounted between the bottom of your case and the top of here. So it provides a little extra protection. Anyway, and there should be one that's already there in place that, you know, just matches this size. If not, they short you. <laughs> anyway, then we just put the cover on and you would reinstall your lever at this point. Uh, honestly, you can do it without the shaft cover on, but let's pretend I mounted this. Now I can put the top dust washer on, and these are custom acrylic ones I've cut. And then you just mount the ball top as usual. So hand tighten it on first. Then use this old trick. Hold the ball top in firmly while you get this in. And just tighten it down. And there you go. Now, because you have this extra kind of layer, it's protecting it from actually reaching the shaft and turning it at all. 
I feel it just gives you a little bit more peace of mind, and I like a thicker joystick shaft anyway. All right, so that's how to install a joystick you know, shaft cover and have it protect your ball top from falling off. Now that our first problem is solved, what about problem two? You know, you're moving around your stick and it just feels crunchy around the center. It doesn't feel smooth and eh, what's wrong with it? Do I have to throw out my stick? No, not at all. It's a very simple fix and I'll show you what you need. Before we jump into problem two, let's talk about what you're going to need to successfully pull this off. First of all, you're going to need anything you need to get into your case, open it up so you can have access to lever. Usually that's going to be a screwdriver, unless you have one of those push button fancy cases that just, you know, opens just at the touch of a button. It's all nice. You'll also probably want a flathead precision screwdriver here. If you have a set, that works well. I like to use pliers when I'm doing this. Sometimes you have an ornery e-clip that just won't insert, and if you don't know what the e-clip is, I'll show you that here in a second. Don't worry. For cleaning, because usually once you go back and do this, it's dirty, it's yucky, we want to clean it up, I'll have some Q-tips on hand, also use this to apply the grease. Some rubbing alcohol, 90% or better is usually enough is you know good for cleaning also i like having microfiber towels these don't scratch anything and they you know, do a good job of cleaning things up also for storing any wayward parts i like having a little parts bin so that you know, any clips or any parts that come off i know where they are and it's less likely that i'll just brush them aside so anyway now that you have the parts and tools you need to make this happen there is one thing you're going to need else, and that is, well, if I'm going to lubricate this, don't I need some grease? And of course you do. So Focus Attack sells these little dabs, and these are like 50 cents each. You can order a few if that's all you think you need. However, I just went out and got this. It's Super Lube Silicone Grease with Syncolon is what it's called, but it's really just Teflon. Um, you really want a silicone grease, and this is part number 92003. A 3-ounce tube of this is going to last you forever, and it's, you know, $18, $22. Well, it's just, you know, look at your local hardware stores, and there you go. So, let's get started. Now, the first step, of course, is going to be opening up your case. Now, I'm going to be showing this again on the Bear JLX, just so it's a little clearer. Uh, use your screwdriver or whatever tools you need to to get access to your lever. You don't need to dismount it. Okay, at this point I'm going to assume you open up your case and you have access to the bottom of your lever. So let's take a look. I'm going to turn this over and what we need to do is you see this little C-shaped clip that's on here? The kind of E-clip I referred to earlier. Sometimes it's C-clip, sometimes it's an E-clip, so either or. What we want to do is take our precision screwdriver and there's little notches here and here, and you can just kind of lever that out. So, just be careful because this is under some spring pressure. And sometimes it's a little obstinate. But just keep levering that out slowly, and it should come free. All right. And make sure you put that aside. That's key to holding your joystick together, so don't lose it. Like I said, having a little cup, a little tray, it's all good. Uh, you can use an Altoid tin, whatever. Anyway, this actuator here, see this white piece of plastic? This is what makes contact with the switches inside. And when this makes touches those, it clicks them in, and that's why your character moves. All right, so let's remove that and put it aside. Next up, you'll see the spring. And it looks like this one might be a little greasy. No, nope, it's okay. All right. Now down beneath is a little black plastic uh, spring receiver, but we don't need to touch that right now. So you'll notice now if I pull up, this comes loose. And there we go. So this black plastic piece is your pivot. And that's what we want to work on a little bit as well as the underside here, the pivot cup. So I can move around that spring receiver. It should be kind of stuck just from the friction from the grease, or sort of, or the stickiness thereof. So what we'll do is I'll take some Q-tips and 
What I like to do with them, just so they don't leave any fuzz, is just kind of spin them while I'm pinching them. That way, kind of keeps any loose fibers from going everywhere. And then just, if you hold it up, like if you have one of these spouts, it'll just kind of get it wet without being overly obnoxious. Just make sure it doesn't drip all over the place. And I'll kind of clean up this edge. And you can also use a little of the alcohol on uh, your towel as well. That works fine. So I'm not seeing a lot of black stuff. If you haven't lubed your pivot in a while, you might get a lot of nasty looking gunk. But this is a pretty new joystick actually. So all I want to do is kind of circle around the cup to clean out the grease that's there. Kind of the spent stuff, the nastiness. And there we go. Again, this is pretty new lever. Uh, I haven't even installed it yet, so it's very clean, but we can relube it just for demonstration purposes. Now, if your spring receiver falls out like so, don't worry about it. Just give it a wipe down while you can and hold it off to the side because we'll put it back in. All right. Next up, we'll be ready for lubrication. One little thing before we continue lubing, I recommend, likely your shaft is going to be a little bit dirty if you haven't cleaned it in a while. Again, you can just apply some alcohol and give it a wipe down. You can remove the pivot, set it aside for a second, then just slide it back on. And then if you want to give that a wipe down, that works too. So at this point, it should be pretty dry and ready. Next up, we're gonna apply actual grease. Now, we wanna be pretty sparing with it. You just want a thin coat on the pivot and in the pivot cup. Uh, really, you can just do the pivot cup and it'll take care of it, but I like to put a little on there just because. Anyway, so I'll just squeeze enough, and again, I'll tighten the, the fibers on the Q-tip. Don't use the same Q-tip used to clean. So I'm just gonna put a little bit around here. And some people I think use other tools, but I find this works just fine. Kind of circle it around, get it nice and even on the pivot cup here. Make sure you're coating the entire area. And then I'll just take a little bit more. You don't need a lot. See how little I'm using? And just dab it over the sides of the pivot like so. So you should start seeing it have a little bit of sheen. And there, it's all good to go. So once you're ready, you'll just insert this. And now you're ready to flip it over. And you'll need to hold on to it for a while because we don't have anything retaining this shaft right now. All right, next up, let's go ahead and insert this bottom part. This is the spring receiver. Now you'll notice it has a higher side and kind of a lower side. You want to make sure that higher side is up so it can actually receive the spring. So it might take a little doing to kind of finesse it past the switches. And sometimes it just helps to have a little help really. If you're having trouble running the shaft, instead of doing that, just kind of pull it down and then to get it past the little switches. You may need to pull it out entirely. That's okay. Just put that down and then hold it in place. Push this back in and there you go. All right, so there's step one of reassembly. Now we're gonna insert the spring just like that. It's easy. Just make sure it you know, goes around that center pin, sort of, of the spring receiver. You'll sort of know if you've got it right. It really doesn't fit much other way. And then let's put our actuator on. And what we're going to need to do is sneak this little clip on. So what you have to do is push this down. Come on. It might be finicky. And you'll see a little groove 
in the shaft here. So if you can see, it's very small, but it's right there. And that's where we need to shove our clip. So just get it there. And this is where I need to use pliers myself. But if you got better fingers than I do, you know, feel free to just shove it on. And there we go. You should get a satisfying click and it will be in place. It's not going to unlock. And there we go. We have a nice smooth pivot again and you're good to go. One note of caution, if you have a pretty specialized setup, which is a Teflon body, such as in the case of the Auto Series mod, or uh, I think the JLX might actually have it too, and you have a stainless steel or titanium or other metal pivot, you likely don't even need to lubricate at all because the natural Teflon in there will just serve as a lubricant in itself. You can kind of tell if you put in the metal pivot inside that Teflon body, it just kind of almost moves on its own like it's already slippery. So that can tell you right away, oh, I don't need to lubricate in the slightest. Let's get into our next problem. And you know, if you're pressing one direction, left, right, up or down, and they don't register consistently or they don't work at all, you likely have a bad switch. And most levers, most J levers use a PCB assembly, kind of like this one. This is the TPMA for the JLF, and there's an entirely new assembly for the JLX, but we're gonna get into how to replace that. Okay, so what are we going to need to pull this off? Well, obviously you're going to need something to get in your case, unless you have that handy dandy push button case, so probably gonna need your screwdriver. And you're gonna need a replacement switch assembly. Now, if you have a not PCB using joystick, most J levers are going to use a switch assembly like this, but then you're just going to need some switches to individually replace. But in this case, I'm going to assume that you're using a JLF or JLX and you're going to be using a switch assembly. Okay, so this repair might sound scary, but it's actually really easy. So what you want to do is, since you'll have your lever mounted in its case, uh, just note where the power adapter and where the leads are for your PCB. Also, you may be able to save yourself a step if you check and see, and you know this is not connected all the way, the wires are not there, or you see damaged wires or cut wires, well, you've got a different problem. Either you know plug it in or repair those wires, and that might do the trick for you. Okay, now that you're inside your enclosure and you're getting at this, what do we need to do? Well, there are little points here. So you see these black tabs? This is what's holding on this center clear plastic piece, which is called the gate. This is what restricts your movement. So you can have octagonal gates, you can have this square gate, you can have circle gates. It's really up to your player preference, but that's not what we're here today. So what we want to do is go around and push these tabs back while moving this up. Now, sometimes I can get it with my um, and such. Um, when you're working in a case, it can be a little harder to do just because you know you can't move this. But since I can cheat, I'm going to take advantage of that. All right. Once you get a couple of them up, it usually becomes a little easier unless you're a klutz like me. And this could be my fifth take. You never know. All right. So let's try and wedge that one up. All right. Once it starts coming up, though, it becomes a lot easier. So I'll just apply that. And then kind of also, since I can rotate this, make sure you know how that went. It should be pretty free form generally, but yeah, just to be safe. All right, then this should come up right away. And remember, we're up here. So I hope you took a picture. I don't wanna to have to go back to my own video to remember how I did that. All right. Now, sometimes I'll take a permanent marker and just put a marking of top up here or something just so I have a reference, but you know, there's that. All right, so then we've already slid this guy out and I'm gonna pretend this is brand new. I'm gonna slide my quote unquote new one back in. Once again, making sure I line that up and then I'm going to place my gate back on top. Make sure you have the right side of that gate because there is, like if I try and do it backwards, I don't think it'll work as well. I don't think it'll work at all because there's these little bumps that kind of set it where it's supposed to be. So you won't be able to. So just be mindful of how that gate went. 
then kind of press it down. You should get a few clicks, make sure they're all in place, all four points. And there you go, you've replaced your switch assembly. After you replace your switch assembly, go ahead, go into joy.cpl or in-game and make sure things work the way they should. You should now have consistent movement, directional should work again just like they should, and if it's still not working, you may have a wiring fault somewhere. Our final problem is coming up and it's, you know, I used to feel like my joystick returned to center just right, but now it just doesn't. The spring feels weak. It feels just mm, not the way I like it, or maybe you just want to increase the tension as a modification anyway. I'm going to show you how to do that next. All right, before we dive into this, of course, let's talk about what you're going to need. The first thing is you're going to need your replacement spring, and make sure it's compatible with the stick you're putting into, of course. Can't just grab any old spring. All right, then I, again, like to have pliers, a mini screwdriver, and a regular screwdriver. This kind of utilizes some of the skills and techniques we use to grease up that pivot, so we're going to get back into it. Let's dive right into changing out your spring. So what we're going to do, of course, you've opened up your case and now you're coming to your lever. We're going to go again and remove the E-clip, C-clip, whatever you've got. Just use the mini screwdriver to apply that out. Come on. And yeah, be mindful, this might push up. And again, if you have that cup, Altoids tin, whatever you're going to use to hold your parts, I recommend you do it there. Now remove the actuator and then remove the spring. Throw that old one wherever you're going to put it. And then let's go ahead, put in the replacement spring, put the actuator back on. Make sure we're centered up, which should be good. And of course, make sure that spring mates with that spring receiver underneath. You know, if it's off center, it's not going to work well. All right, then put your actuator down. You now the, the cup of the actuator should fit around the top edge of the spring. Push this down. Now get out your C-clip. Of course, mine wants to be annoying right now. And sometimes if I have trouble, especially with a higher tension spring, I'll use a screwdriver to push that down. But, you know, uh, my fingers don't want to cooperate today. So I'm just going to use tools, use the pliers right there. And there you go. You have changed the spring. It's just that easy. In my experience, I'd say 80 to 90% of J lever problems can be traced back to one of the problems that these four maintenance techniques solves. So whether it's a loose ball top, a crunchy pivot, a broken switch, or a dying spring, you now know how to fix all of these, and so you're going to add years to your JLF or other J lever. If you found this content useful, it helped you out fixing your JLF or other J lever, hey, please leave a like. I really appreciate it, and it lets me know to make more content like this. And if you found that you know, something wasn't clear or you have a specific use case that's different from what I presented here or you're just having trouble, please leave a comment and tag me in there and I'll try and answer within three days. Also, if you want to see more content from me, you want to be notified, you know, this is the YouTube refrain. You've all heard it before. Hit subscribe, hit the bell, etc, etc. I'm trying to grow a little bit at least and I want to provide really good tutorials out there for stick building. This has been Zevros for Zero to Fight Stick and happy building. So there is a better fix for this, but it does take a lot more work in the short term. And let me go ahead and show you what that is. <laughs> That's a blooper.